New owners and charter clients want to maximize their return on experience with more adventurous, more original and sustainable destinations. In this episode of Yacht Talk, we explore new horizons to find the next super yacht hotspots. My guests for this show are Jordi Mackay Lewis of Polaris and Michelle Johnson, editor of luxury lifestyle magazine Tempus. I'm Charlotte Kahn and welcome to Yacht Talk by Heeson. Well, my first guest is a real globe trotter. After his military career, where he deployed twice to Afghanistan, he co-founded Bespoke Travel and Yachting Experience Agency, Polaris. Since then, he's had numerous adventures and yacht expeditions around the world and has a passion for unearthing the lesser known regions of the planet. Welcome to the show, Jordi. Thank you very much for having me, Charlotte, and thank you to Heaton as well. Good to be here. Obviously, the um, and you've mentioned it, the obvious yachting uh, destinations tend to be exotic in, in warm places, but you'd like to, to widen the range of experiences and, and destinations. Um, so what are the regions that you expect will become more um, accessible, maybe more uh, attractive to regular super yacht owners and charter clients? So it's a, it's a, great, it's a great question, Charlotte. So really what we found um, many years ago when we first launched Polaris was that the, the yacht sector was very focused on the Mediterranean and the Caribbean and, and, and the so-called milk run. And we wanted to uh, see if we can uh, challenge that in a positive way. And we realized that to do that, we really have to create new destinations. And that involves everything from installing the infrastructure, uh, as well as developing new experiences and bringing in the right people uh, and, and educating the yacht industry and what, what can be done. So I think one of the areas that we're investing heavily in is, is the Red Sea. Um, this is within striking distance of the Mediterranean. It's a great winter alternative to the Caribbean. Uh, it's less strenuous for, for the yachts. It's nearer the yards. It's, it makes a lot of sense in many, in many ways. But, but more importantly, it's really opening up. Saudi Arabia has just opened up uh, in, a, in, a, in a very positive uh, way and is now um, permitting luxury yachts and super yachts uh, in its shores. And then you've got incredible diving all the way down the Sudan and Eritrean coast, uh, not to mention Egypt, which is, which is a bit of a known character in the Red Sea, but, but most people haven't ventured south of Egypt. So it's a really exciting time. Polaris is spending uh, a lot of time and resource into developing this. Um, and we are working with the governments of Sudan, Eritrea, and Saudi Arabia, um, as well as private investment groups to make sure that it is, a, it is a major super yacht destination for years to come. And that's really starting this year uh, with the, the Saudi Grand Prix in December um, this month. And, uh, and then also a number of events that are happening um, in Saudi Arabia, which is encouraging more and more yachts to go there. So we're, we're sort of almost playing catch up in building the logistics and the experiences to uh, deliver for yacht owners and charter clients. So let's talk a bit more about experiences because you have uh, spoken about the destinations, but what about activities? What new types of activities can you do or do you envisage people will be doing? I think um, the design of yachts has, has changed uh, quite a lot recently. So the, the design of Explorer yachts, uh, very much like um, the, the Heaton Exventure, where you have assets on board and toys on board, that enable you to do many more ex types of experiences. So that's really interesting. And then on top of that, we, you know, what, what we do well is we bring in logistics uh, to the yachts, wherever they might be. Uh, so there are no real boundaries to, to what you can do and where you can do them anymore uh, with companies like ours, uh, enhancing that, that experiential return on investment that, that really what we're, is what we're trying to promote more and more. Um, but you know, in Saudi Arabia now, we're looking at things like dune buggies that will pick up clients and guests from the yachts, take them into these incredible canyons and wadis, uh, and, 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 and a far more deeper um, experience, deep field, um, than, than what traditionally yacht crews and captains have been looking at, which is very much the shoreline. So it's, it's really exciting. There are yeah, there are tons of, of new experiences happening all the time, through submersibles, uh, through, all the way through to um, flying inflatable boats. Uh, and, we, and we use all those assets to really increase and enhance the experience that our, our clients have. 
Michel, do you agree? Are you also seeing uh, more enthusiasm maybe for experiential yachting holidays? I think experiential, as you've said, is, is the word of modern luxury travel. I think that what we're seeing is um, a real hunger post-COVID for um, the ultra-rich to have a flexible, personalised, unique experience that's really keyed into what they desire from a holiday. So it's not necessarily, oh, I want to go to this one place and see this one feature. It's, I want to feel energised. I want to discover something new or, or discover the iconic areas of the world in a new way. Um, and certainly, I think what you've been saying about that experiential mm -hmm. um, feeling is certainly what we've been seeing as well. And tell us a bit more about what you're seeing in terms of trends currently. I think it is, it, what we are seeing in, in luxury trends is this idea of discovery. Um, I think that, you know, there was a, a report in the um, Washington Post recently that says post-COVID um, ultra high net worths are doubling what they would usually spend on a vacation. And that kind of tells you exactly what you, what you need to know in sense of people are really taking the time to consider what they want from their travel, how they travel. The journey is as much a part of it as the destination, if not more so. Um, conversely, we're also seeing a rise in elements like private jet travel. So there's a real sense of a need of convenience, a desire to be together with your family, your friends, your loved one without putting yourselves at risk and having a control over your environment perhaps in, in a lavish way and in a luxurious way. Um, I think a company called FlexJet um, announced that their September, uh, for September they had 50% more private jet charters than they had had in the previous months, which is a huge hike and, and certainly um, an indication of the trends to come. But conversely, there are other surveys that suggest that 83% of us want more sustainable travel and very concerned of sustainability in travel. Now this might seem like um, quite a, a, a converse sort of way of thinking, but actually the biggest barrier to entry seems to, against sustainable travel seems to be money. And so I think we're seeing a huge interest in sustainability conservation from ultra high net worths who are able to spend the money to experience something new in a wonderful way and give back as well. Georgie, I understand that's uh, important to you personally, but as a company as well, sustainability. We haven't mentioned the work of your foundation, for instance. Absolutely, and I, and I, I couldn't, couldn't agree more with Michelle. I think what we're finding, and especially post-COVID, is that this, uh, this responsible travel uh, trend is, isn't going anywhere. This is, this is set to stay and it's getting uh, uh, more and more detailed in what people um, want to see from the, their itineraries, how they travel, how they get there, how long they spend there. So people are going for longer, um, and they want to get, uh, they want, they want to travel with purpose. Mm. So there needs to be a real purpose behind what they do from the beginning. So what we what we we launched at the beginning of the pandemic was the Polaris Foundation, um, and inside that is, is is yacht conservation, where we we match science uh, and, and and vessels. So it's scientific research. Um, if if scientists need a platform in Antarctica, for example, we find the yachts, and they might not even be on a Polaris trip, but. Uh, any yacht down there that has capacity uh, to take a scientist, then, then we can match them. And that happens anywhere else in the world. Um, and communicating that to, to a yacht client and saying, well, actually, we, we would like to, to encourage you to, to dedicate 5% of your charter uh, time or a private owner uh, to, to this, to conservation or to, to a social cause. Um, it has been a really interesting um, uh, new idea of ours and, and it's gone down very well. And, and then on top of that, we've got carbon offset, which is mandatory for all Polaris clients and trips. And, and no one's pushed back on this. This has been welcomed. And I think it's, it's something that the, the rest of the industry should really adopt. And um, we're, we're, we're trying to encourage the rest of the sort of luxury space to do the same. I don't know if you, if you see a similar, Absolutely. similar trend in that. We've, we've spoken to at Tempus, you know, we, we're very interested in sustainability and how luxury, the impact that luxury has and responsible luxury. Um, and what we've been finding from talking to other super yacht, um, not just industry leaders, but owners as well, is there is a huge interest in ocean conservation because I think, mm. uh, forgive me for jumping forward a little bit, but I think that, you know, without the oceans, there is no industry. The, the protection of our oceans is absolutely paramount for the, in for the enjoyment of yachting, but also for the industry itself. And so, of course, you know, industry leaders are stepping up with organisations like the Water Revolution Foundation, which I know Heeson is a part of, um, in order to change policy, raise standards, um, develop new technologies, which is so fascinating, um, in order to, down, not downplay pollution, but to counteract some of the pollution. Because 
travel is unfortunately a, a high polluting industry and so you know taking the first steps is a it's a very very exciting time I think in the industry and I think that owners are very passionate about it and I think you mentioned something before about you know it's education of what can be done mm. and so the more owners are learning about what can be done the more they want to get involved we've seen owners um, delivering data to marine scientists for example during their own expeditions so there's a real give and take I think that's that's creating a very exciting period. Talking of luxury, what does it mean to you? Is it freedom, new destinations? Is it exploring? Well, what does luxury uh, look like or uh, feels like for you? It's, a, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting question because I think, like any concept, um, it's different for everyone. For us um, at Tempest, not to be too punny, but um, it's about time how you spend your time, how you, um, what, what, do you, what do you value and how do you achieve that? You know, I think time is, as we've found out, a huge, com one of the only currencies and commodities that really means something and, and that is quite, you know, how you, whether it's putting your energy in, in your work, in your family, in your travel, um, how you invest your time is true luxury for us, I think. Nice one. Geordie. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> I, I, um, I, I, yeah, I echo um, what Michelle said, but I, I feel um, I feel creating memories mm. is, is, is also um, such a luxury these days and, and capturing them. And I think um, we, we have moved away from uh, physical goods that don't, don't deliver memories and experiences. And I think we are, are looking more, uh, our clients are certainly looking more at buying assets that deliver memories, and I think yachts are, is an amazing, um, it's an amazing example of that. Because uh, whether it's whether it's doing something in, in the Western Med and not being too adventurous, but, but being adventurous relatively for that client, uh, or whether it's going and, and creating memories in a, in a far-flung place that the family never would have the opportunity to go or cannot get to without a yacht, uh, I think I think that's that's true luxury, and I think um, we're gonna, just going to see a, an awful lot more of that. Uh, in the next 10 years, which is exciting. Now, since this is the last episode of Yacht Talk of this year, we invited Niels Vassen, CFO of Hisson, to reflect on 2021 and to give us an outlook for the shipyard on the years to come. Looking back to uh, 21, I can say that it was an exceptional year for Hisson. On the one hand, we had to deal with uh, COVID-19, a lot of people from the office uh, had to work from home and our production people had to work in uh, shifts. So that's quite a challenge for us. Uh, the good thing is that uh, thanks to the flexibility of all our workers, uh, we are still on track to deliver all the yards uh, in time for our uh, customers. On the other hand, we were very successful commercially. Uh, we have sold five yards in uh, 21. Uh, even this week we eat a chocolate cake for the sale of uh, project uh, 20255, project Apollo. So that's a, it's a good success for us. Uh, we are basically sold out for 22 and 23. Uh, as we are a very financial solid company, we have decided to uh, invest in our speculation uh, program. So we have started up new speculation yards for the coming years. Yeah, this includes uh, project Akira. This is a newly uh, designed uh, project, a 57 meter aluminium, which is ready for delivery in 24. Yeah, with the sale of the fast deliveries and also the continued building of our uh, custom yards, our uh, business model of combining platform yards with custom yards proves to be very successful. I'm very happy that this year the Monaco Yacht Show has taken place again. It's good to see everybody in the industry face to face, to talk about the yachting and to see what's happening in the, in the yachting industry. Uh, we have showed our uh, 55 meter steel uh, mosquito in Monaco. And furthermore, we have announced our sustainability program, he's in uh, Blue Nautech. Uh, one of the key messages there is that we can build all our yachts in uh, hybrid propulsion. Yeah, of course, we should mention the milestones of our uh, custom projects. Uh, our 60 meter steel uh, project Falcon is uh, almost ready for delivery to the owners. Yeah, our flagship, the project uh, Cosmos, the 80 meter aluminium yacht with a top speed of almost uh, 30 knots. She has hit the water in uh, November and on board you really can see the craftsmanship of our people. And we are working hard to deliver the yacht to the owners in uh, April uh, next year. Yeah, our 60 meter uh, project Skyfall with a top speed of 37 uh, knots. And also the 67 meter project Sparda 
is a steel yacht, both uh, yachts have entered the finishing shed and both yachts are ready for delivery in 23. All these milestones and achievements are possible thanks to the great people at Heeson, thanks to our co-makers and all our partners in the yachting industry. I would like to thank everybody for their great efforts. Happy holidays, stay safe and hope to see you all in good health in 22. And that concludes the show for today. Thank you very much, Jordi and Michelle, for your uh, contribution for a bit of escapism today. We all need it at the moment. Uh, it really makes me want to plan my next trip. And thank you very much to all of you out there for watching. Enjoy your holidays, keep safe, and above all, keep yachting.